guys, it's Lauren from Girly Knits, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to knit this super cute bow back dress. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna be teaching you how to knit a bow on your knitting machine. It's basically just a rectangle that we then join with a three needle bind off, and then we wrap yarn around the center to make it into a bow. And then I'm going to be showing you how I made this bow back dress. So I'm gonna show you how I attached the bows and did the joining on the back to create this look. If you'd like to get the pattern for this dress, you can find it linked below, or you can always find all my patterns at girlyknits.com, and then you can also find me on Ravelry and Etsy as Girly Knits. The pattern includes a wide range of sizes and tons of tips and tricks for customizing this dress. So for example, if you wanted to do a smaller keyhole in the back with just one bow or two bows, you could do that. There's also lots of tips for customizing this dress. For example, if you wanna make it longer or if you wanna make the neckband higher or you can make the sleeves any length you like. There's really so many ways that you can make this dress perfect for you. Also, if you'd like to learn all the techniques I use to make this dress, including how to do this mock ribbing for the bottom bands, how to do increases, how to do decreases, how to do all of the shaping for the neckline and the shoulders and the sleeves and the neckband and the keyhole. I have another five part series covering all those techniques which I will also link to below. The yarn I used for this dress is Knit Picks Brava. So I've actually used it in both the worsted weight and the sport weight. So for the dress I'm wearing, I actually used the worsted weight version of this yarn. And then for the dress I'm showing you, I used the sport weight. So I found that I was actually able to get the gauge with both yarns, surprisingly, and I used T5 for the sport weight and T5.5 for the worsted weight. So the worsted weight is just gonna be a little bit thicker, and then the sport weight's gonna be a little bit thinner, so it really depends on your preference, but I found that either yarn will work. The gauge we're working with today is 19 stitches and 27 rows equals four inches in stockinette. So just make sure you're using that dial tension to get the gauge. But honestly, you can make this bow on any knitting machine or any dial tension. It really is a really simple thing that you could do on any machine. All right, so you'll just need to thread up some waist yarn in your main yarn and let's get going. All right, so the first step is to make our bows. So as you can see, I've already made one here. It's basically just a long strip of knitting that we seam together and then we wrap some yarn around the center to make it into a bow. And then we tie this little knot at the back, which we can use for attaching to our dress. To make our bow, we are going to cast on 17 stitches. So we're just going to use our needle selector, make sure we have 17 stitches. I started at zero, so that's 15, 16, 17. And then we are just going to cast on with waist yarn. So just going to thread that through. And then for our dial tension, we just want to use whatever the main tension was of our dress. So I used T5 for this dress, but you might have used T5.5. So just use whatever that was. And then we're just going to take our waist yarn, run it across. And then we're going to take our cast on comb and hang that. We're going to just make sure that every needle is selected. And then move our yarn across again. So all 17 are going. And then we're just going to continue knitting with our waist yarn. And then we're just gonna knit that last row with Ravel cord. So I'm not sure if I have enough yarn left, so I'm just gonna <laughs> move this guy over. Thread in my Ravel cord. It's just gonna make it easier to remove our waste yarn later. Okay, so now that we have that, we are going to join our main yarn. I'm just going to secure my yarn and these little notches here. So we're gonna join the main yarn and we're gonna set our counter to zero. And then I'm just going to knit 50 rows, pretty simple. So I'm gonna get my weight set up. Join my yarn and we're just gonna be knitting to row 50. So I've just reached row 50, so we are going to scrap off with waste yarn, but we want to leave our yarn attached, so I'm just going to take it out of the carriage and then place it in this notch at the
the back of the carriage and we'll come back to that later. So I'm just gonna get some waste yarn. We're gonna join that in the carriage and then just knit about an inch. Then we can just remove it from the carriage and run our carriage across and I'll automatically remove it from the machine. So we've got our rectangle here, it looks good. And next we're just going to do a three needle bind off. So to do the three needle bind off, we're first going to hang our first row of the knitting, which is where our ravel cord is, with the right side facing. So I'm just going to grab my three prong transfer tool and we'll just be hanging those stitches. So I see the first three right here. So I'm just gonna grab those and hang them on the machine and I'll just start at 17 since that's how many stitches we had. But you will notice that there's actually going to be one less stitch this row since it was our first row and we flipped our knitting upside down there will be one less so we're actually going to end up with 16 but we'll have 17 on our last row and I'll show you what to do there. So yeah, we have one less there. So we have that hung and we're just going to remove the waste yarn. And to do that, we're going to pull out the ravel cord. As you may notice, you can't really unwind it from the bottom. So the ravel cord makes it easier to take it off. So we're just gonna undo that and make sure all of our stitches are hung. So now that we have our stitches here, we're just gonna move all these needles out to deposition. And then we're going to pick up that last row so ultimately the right sides of our knitting will be facing. So I'm going to pick these guys up from the wrong side and we're just going to identify that last row there and just pick up those first three stitches. And then we're going to hang them in the latches. So we just want to hang them in the latches because we're actually going to be pulling these needles through to join them to the other stitches. So just make sure that they're in the latches and not pushed back. And then you'll see we have this one extra stitch here, our 17th stitch. So we'll just put him on that last needle and as you can see when I did that this guy left his latch so we're just going to put him back in. So they're all in the latches and now we're going to just move these needles back to C position and it's just as, or as far back as we can go because it's going to make it easier when we're joining them. So now we're just going to join them one by one just pulling the stitches through to join them. And then that guy doesn't have a join, but we'll just pull his latch to the back because we were going to bind off next and we want to make sure he gets bound off too. So you can remove your waist yarn at any point, either after you do your bind off or you can do it now to get it out of the way. I'll just go ahead and remove it now. And now we're just going to use the yarn that is still attached to our ball to bind off. And when I'm binding off, I find it helpful to have a little bit of weight. So I'm just going to hang one claw weight there. And then using my one prong transfer tool, I'm going to take this last stitch, whichever one is closer to your yarn, and you're going to transfer it over to the next stitch. And then you're going to place the yarn in the latch and pull it back to bind off. We're just going to keep doing that for every stitch. And you don't need to do any sort of fancy bind off. Um, you're not really going to see this part because it will be on the inside back of the bow, so you don't need to do anything fancy. And I also noticed that with a three needle bind off, since it's on the inside of your knitting, it doesn't really matter how you do it because you, you won't really notice it from the outside. So this is totally fine. And honestly, I'm not even sure that your tension matters that much because it's going to be bunched up at the middle when we wrap our bow center. So really, you can just not have to worry. All right, so we're just reaching that last stitch. Just gonna bind that off. And then before you break your yarn, 
I'm going to have you leave a tail so that you have enough to wrap the center of your bow. So I'm going to have you leave a 96 inch tail. So I'm just going to grab my ruler and 96 inches is actually four times the length of my ruler. So I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, and then break my yarn. And then we're going to pull that through that last loop. And then now we have our joined rectangle. So the next step is just to wrap the center of the bow. So we're going to place this bind off edge at the back and then we're going to leave this tail attached there. We're going to use it later. And then we're just going to wrap this long tail around the center of the rectangle. We're going to do it a little tighter initially just to get the bow going. And then once that looks good, we can just wrap. Making sure our sides are even. And then just go until it's about equal length as the cast on tail. And then we're just going to knot those together at the back. Just one and two. And then just uh, neaten it up as you need to. And there we go. That's our bow. All right. So now we're ready to add our bows to our dress. So the first thing we're going to do is seam our dress in two different places where we're going to join our bows. And so when you're knitting this dress pattern and making the large keyhole that incorporates the bows, I had you place markers and that was so it'll be easier to see where you join the keyhole and so that all the keyholes will be evenly spaced and it just makes it a little simpler so you don't have to guess. So we're just gonna grab a scrap of the color of our main yarn and we're just going to do mattress stitch for about eight rows or an inch or however long you like. And so I'm just going to start the row right above where I placed my marker. So I'm just going to come in through here. And then we're just going to go to the other side and just grab the two bars above the marker there. Pull that through. Then we're just going to continue doing mattress stitch. So we have about eight rows. So let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So we're just gonna go two more here, and then two more here. Since I started on the left side, so that should be even. And then we've just created our join. So it's pretty simple. And we can just cut that there, and we can secure that later. So now for my second join, I'm just going to thread another piece of scrap yarn. So you may wish to try your dress on and just make sure that you like how it looks. Um, this join here is intended to help cover your bra strap hopefully so hopefully that's like in the right place and if you just want to double check that before moving on we're just gonna flip our dress to the inside and now we can remove these markers we don't need those anymore and then we just want to secure these pieces of yarn so what i like to do is take each end and just grab two stitches there and then just do a knot to secure it so that should be good and now we're ready to attach our bows so we have these tails here, so we can actually just use them to initially secure the bow on each of the joins. 
And then I have it so that there's a bow down here as well, but you could leave it open if you wanted. It's your choice. And then I'll just show you how I attach one of these bows so you get the idea and then you can just do the same thing for the other three. So I'm actually gonna use crochet hook here to help me out. So I'll just position this about the center of the join and then I'm just gonna pull this through. So that seems like it's in a pretty good position. It covers the join, so you won't even notice that join there. And then I'm just gonna grab my tapestry needle and we're gonna secure the bow to the dress. So as you may notice, it's like a little floppy. It might like, you know, go upside down or do like pinwheels. So we wanna make sure that it's secure in its spot. So to do that, we're going to go to the inside of our dress again. And then we're going to thread these two tails And we're basically going to just further reinforce the bow. So what I like to do is catch it on the inside of where the wrapping is at the top, center, and bottom. Now let's go take a look at our bow. So as you can see, it's not wobbling around. It's not gonna go anywhere. <laughs> it's secure in its spot. So yeah, you can just do that for each of the joins and then the base of the keyhole if you'd like. And then lastly, you're just gonna be weaving in some ends so the inside of your dress looks nice. So I would probably just weave these tails in. If you actually weave them into the side of the keyhole, they won't really show. They'll kind of curl over and you won't see any ends poking out. And then for this, if you want this to look even neater and not notice this contrast yarn, you could actually bring these tails to the other side and weave them into the back of the bow because you won't see that when it's facing out. So whatever you wanna do, just weave them in somehow and it will look really nice. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I would love to see your bow dress if you make one. Let me know how it turns out and I would love to see photos. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you do make this dress, please share photos with me. I would love if you shared them on Ravelry or on Instagram where I'm girly knits. If you like this video, please let me know and comment below and let me know what you'd like to learn next. Bye.